too many spiritual rules or ideas about God that put him in a box or that limit him or that somehow make it seem like this is the way to expect that it's always going to go because in reality there is an order to creation, there's an order to what God has done, there's a certain um, plan that God has laid out that everything is going to flow into, but within that there's also the most unbelievable variety that you could never imagine that in the intricacies of it you may not see the exact design or feel that you are part of that design but in the volume of it you have become really sort of predictable and there are patterns and so one pattern I've noticed <laughs> after saying I don't want to create patterns I don't want to tell people that there are patterns is that Whenever you kind of go, like they always say this, whenever you go to the mountaintop, you can count on the valley coming. <laughs> and you know, yesterday I had like mountaintop experiences and just wonderful time with sharing and caring and doing things that God would have me to do in my day. And it just seems so, wow, you know, like, oh, this is so cool, God. It doesn't get any better than this. And then today came and BAM! It was like, where did that day go? <laughs> and I don't feel any less joy. I just feel a little more beat up. <laughs> I feel a little older. <laughs> but that's what being a mature believer is. You recognize the times that when you think that everything's going to go just constantly up, there's always going to be the times that you come back down into the valley and you deal with all that that incurs, which the, the symbolism we talk about is that when Jesus and the disciples went up the mountaintop, they saw him transfigured, he was changed before their eyes, and they saw him in his glory that he had with the Father, and they were so amazed by it that they fell down on their feet, their face, and even Peter wanted to make little temples for him and worship him and, you know, because God was there and God spoke and, you know, he told him, like, look, hey, straighten up your act, listen to my son, he'll tell you what to do. <laughs> and basically Jesus said, you know, let's go down the valley. And when they came down off of that wonderful, miraculous experience, they hit the valley and they couldn't do squat when it came to this demon-possessed person. And Jesus just simply said that, you know, this is done by much prayer and fasting, that it's not always easy after you've been blessed to recognize that there's still work to be done and that it's not always going to be easy, but sometimes it's going to get a little tough. Sometimes it's going to be a little rough. But you know, whether it's tough or whether it's rough, God is there. All noble things are difficult. Enter you in at the straight gate because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Matthew 7, 13, 14. If we are going to live as disciples of Jesus, we have to remember that all noble things are difficult. The Christian life is a glorious difficulty, but the difficulty of it does not make us faint and cave in. It rouses us to overcome. Do we so appreciate the marvelous salvation of Jesus Christ that we are our utmost for his highest? Hmm, finally found where they said it. God saves men by his sovereign grace through the atonement of Jesus. God saves men. He works in us to will and to do of his good pleasure, but we have to work out that salvation in practical living. His salvation is being accomplished in us while we are accomplishing the manifestation of it outwardly. If once we start on the basis of his redemption to do what he commands, we find that we can do it. What you hear? that you do. <laughs> what you know, that you do. When you don't, you will know, because <laughs> it won't go. <laughs> if we fail, it is because we have not practiced. We have not done it. We did not put it into our lives. The crisis will reveal whether we have been practicing or not. If we obey the Spirit of God and practice in our physical life what God has put in us by His Spirit, then, when the crisis comes, we shall find that our own nature, as well as the grace of God, will stand by us. Thank God he does not give us difficult things to do. Or it doesn't seem like it. 
or it is, and we just don't realize that it could be a lot easier. His salvation is a glad thing, but it is also a heroic, holy, living thing. It tests us for all we are worth. Jesus is bringing many sons unto glory, and God will not shield us from the requirements of a son. God's grace turns out men and women with a strong family likeness to Jesus Christ. Not milksops, not babies, not whiners, not criers. It takes a tremendous amount of discipline to live the noble life of a disciple of Jesus in the actual things. It is always necessary to make an effort to be noble. You know, I wish that there was that idea that could be brought across to people today that there is a nobility not a familiarity to what we should be as we work out our salvation that he's worked in us or that he's given us freely because sometimes we bring God down and we make him into somebody that works within our society or works within our our age group or that somehow you know Jesus is hip or Jesus is this or Jesus is that how about we become like Jesus rather than we make Jesus like us because then I think we rise from the ashes of our humanity, which is a devastating and shocking you know, experience and failure, and we become godlike in the sense of putting on godliness, which really is what Chambers is talking about, which is nobility. We need to become like God so that we would exemplify the price that Jesus paid for our salvation and that we would work that out in our lives, showing that, yes, we are saved by grace, yes, we are being changed, and yes, we are becoming more temperate, more meek, more kind, more able to do those things that we know we ought to do, that many times we don't do because we think we can just set it aside or say, nah, it's no problem, we'll do it next time, or it'll get better in the by and by. But the reality is, today is the day we hear his voice. Today we can be like Jesus. Today we have his salvation. Won't you work it out? Won't you bring it out? Won't you make it reality in your life as he wants you to do? As you don't react to the things around you, but you take it to the Lord in prayer? As you are merciful as you are kind as you are meek as you are gentle as you are tender as you are extending grace as you love your enemies and those who despitefully use you isn't that what we want to be isn't that what we ought to be don't you think that's what we should be oh god May it be so that one day we find that we wake up in the morning and you have made it a reality in us. Because God, when I look in the mirror of my own manifestation of Jesus, I don't see your salvation, but I see your grace. I don't see me like him. But I know that you began a good work in me and that you will not leave me until you complete it, unto the day of salvation. Make me like Jesus, Lord. Make me like Jesus.